learn how to do your very own European mount. Stick with us for the N1 Outdoors in one minute. On a recent bow hunting trip to South Georgia, my partners and I had identified a wide six point with spindly antlers and very small brow tines as a buck that we felt like would be a good one to go ahead and harvest if given the opportunity. Well, that opportunity presented itself the very next morning as I was able to take this buck with my bow at about 12 yards, which is always fun and always a blessing. But this is not a buck we plan on taking to the taxidermist. So we felt like this would be a great opportunity to show those of you at home how to do your very own European mount. So in just a minute, Josh Wells is gonna show you step-by-step step how to do that process, but be sure you watch to the end of the video where Josh teaches you how to prep the head and the skull for this process that he's gonna show you. We hope you learned something. Y'all enjoy. Hey, this is Josh Wells with M1 Outdoors, and today we're gonna to talk about doing a Euro mount. We've got a few essential materials that you'll need to do a Euro mount. I'll go through those with you in just a second, and I just wanted, want you to know that I'm not a, um, a taxidermist I'm not a professional doing this but I have done it several times and I've through the years and through trial and error kind of figured out the some of the best practices in doing a euro mount and um, I've gotten the product where it's turned out almost as good as what you would get from a taxidermist so hopefully this video helps you out all right a few supplies that you're gonna need to do the European mount are a, obviously a knife to skin the hide from the skull good set of forceps, a screwdriver. You'll need hydrogen peroxide. That's, that'll be two quarts of hydrogen peroxide. You'll need some liquid dish soap. You'll need some dark wood stain, masking tape, some clear shrink wrap, and a pitcher or a big cup to add water to the pot as it's boiling. This whole process will take about five hours. You'll boil the skull you'll actually simmer it a very low boil for four hours and then you'll need to budget about 30 minutes or an hour for cleanup and for um, bleaching the skull which it will boil for you know so about 30 minutes all right so this is after four hours of boiling time in the what, just water and liquid dish soap. Um, I apologize if it's if you getting the wind sound. It, the wind's picked up quite a bit today. A front has been moving through today, which should make the deer hunting a little bit better tomorrow. Um, so after four hours, you can see how tender this the meat is around the skull. You just work your knife in and remove the meat and the tendons best you can here and it'll just kind of fall away you don't want to get too aggressive with it because you can pop a bone loose See how that stuff just falls out of there. So the most aggravating part is around the eye sockets because all these eye sockets connect to the inside of the skull in the brains. And I'll show you how we're going to get the brains out shortly. But they're, they're connected with all these tendons and it makes them a little bit harder to get to. But just work slowly around all these bones and that meat just kind of comes out of there and the key is four hours if you do it for three hours it's not gonna come off as good slow simmer for four hours works best if you boil it too hard it's gonna weaken the bone and you're gonna break some stuff so slow simmer don't get don't try to do it too fast 
All right, so I've got most of the meat scraped off here. That took me about 10 minutes. And now I'm gonna pop the earbuds out. This is way, This is how we get the brains out. So there's a hole right here, and I'm just gonna take this screwdriver in there and you just work it around and it'll, it'll pop itself out of there. Eventually pop itself out of there. There it goes. This one's tough. All right. That's got the earbuds out. And now the forceps. Take the forceps and all the sinus stuff. You want to get everything out of the sinus because anything that you leave later down the road will cause discoloration in the bone. It'll make it turn yellow. So you don't want any yellowing. And it, it'll take two or three years for it to happen, but I've had it happen on some that I've done years later. And so just, just be easy around this part of the bone right here because if you hit it too hard while it's hot, you could break it. And if you do break it, it's not a big deal. Sometimes Sometimes this will come off. Sometimes these bones right here, the bottom of the nose will come loose if these tendons get cooked too long. If they do, you can put them back with super glue. So don't, don't worry if that comes off. You can super glue it back. So you get as much as you can get from the front side and then we can, you can get in from the back under the under the brain cavity to get the rest of it so you can if you look in there you can see some of this some of this it's kind of kind of papery stuff in here all of that doesn't have to come out but the sinus tissue definitely has to come out All right, so once once you get the earbuds popped out and you get the sinus cleaned out, you just want to take a water hose. And some people do this with a pressure pressure washer. I don't like using a pressure washer because I'm afraid it'll damage the bones. But some of the tender bones. But just wash it down. Wash some of the stuff off of it that's kind of hanging there. Get down in the, ca the, the sinus cavity. In this, in this hole where the brains are, you want to put that water hose in there and flush those brains out. Like I said, all these tendons connect from the brains, so it's important to get the brains out. And then whenever we, we boil it the second time to bleach it, all these final tendons will break loose once you get the brains out and they'll come off. All right, so this is what it looks like when we're getting ready to bleach it. We've got the brains cleaned out. There's nothing in there. That broke loose. The tissue so we could pull the all the meat that was connected in here out we got the sinus cleaned out and it's it's fairly clean it's just not bleached so now we're going to go put it back in the bowl and bleach it okay so now we're back at the existing water that still has the soap in the water we want to just add two quarts of hydrogen peroxide to that water
Okay, now I'm preparing the antlers to go into the bleach or the peroxide, which is going to bleach the skull. I have, you can see I got about two feet of saran wrap. I'm going, I'm going to do each wrap each antler. You want to go from the base up to the, about the bottom of the brow tine. So, and there's not really a, any particular way that you need to do this other than just get it wrapped. What's going to happen is when it gets in that hot boiling water, this is going to automatically shrink tight to the antler and keep and keep out the majority of the water. There will some water will find its way through, and that's why we have the dark stain. We can come back, and if some of these darker parts around the base get bleached a little bit, we just come back with some stain and a Q-tip, and we'll color it up and you will never know the difference. Okay, you can see I've got the saran wrap around the base of the antlers. I put, I've wrapped masking tape around there to kind of secure it. When it goes into the water, it's gonna, that saran wrap's gonna shrink around those antlers as it boils and it'll just hold tight. And I didn't mention earlier, but when I started boiling, I put about a quarter cup of the liquid dish soap in this water. And I don't think that's a real critical point. I don't think it matters how much you put, just put enough to serve as a degreaser. Okay, the bleaching is complete. See how white the skull got? So I'm gonna take it inside now, unwrap the antlers, the saran wrap, and check to see if there was any bleaching on the base of the antlers and finish the process. All right, so we're gonna take the plastic wrap off. And you can see how it's gotten real sticky and gummy and it's even shrunk really tight to the antlers. And that's what you want it to do because that keeps the peroxide off of the antlers and prevents it from bleaching. And so just on the first glance, it doesn't look like that antler took any bleach at all so there's no need to use the, the wood stain on this one and so sometimes when you do a european mount you're going to have no no bleaching on the antlers whatsoever and then sometimes you're going to have some that leaks through there it just all depending on how tight of a seal that plastic wrap makes around the base of the antler. And so this one doesn't look like it took any either. Check the back. And so Normally when it does take some bleaching on the antlers, there'll be just, just these little burrs around the bottom will have some whiting, some white coloration to it. And, and none of that does, did not happen at all on this one. So there's no need to use the stain this time. But if we were gonna use the stain, I'm gonna demonstrate how you would do it. Well, first of all, you wanna shake your stain a little bit because this has been sitting in the shop for a year without being used and it's probably settled somewhat. So I would pop the top off. And just use the top. Just use what's the stain that's on the top. And all you need to do is just roll roll that Q tip on there like that. Get a little bit of stain on there. And so some of these burrs that are a little bit white, I'm going to just demonstrate on that. You just, just put a little stain on them until they get a little darker. Just like that. And you let them dry. And then you come back over them again until they get to the color that you want them. Like so. And that's it. 
Okay, I wanted to talk just a minute about the preparation process of the skull before we start the boiling. And so you obviously have to cut the deer's head off. And preferably you would want to cut it at the last vertebrae right here that connects to the back of the skull. Well, normally what happens because the deer's, the deer's neck and ears compress in a spot and most people naturally cut about one vertebrae back. So you have two things to cut off before you can start boiling the skull. The first thing is you wanna cut the last vertebra off the back of the skull. And so once you, once you have the skin removed from the skull, you can see how the skull naturally kind of comes down at an angle right here, and then the neck starts. Well, what you do is you find the back of that skull plate and you just cut the meat down around that and the, the next vertebrae is gonna be about a centimeter away from there. So you have plenty of room to go down and cut around that and you just have to work it out with your hands. And the place of emphasis that you wanna be careful about is this, this lobe right here on the back of the skull where the brains are. You just use that as your guiding point and you can even see where I was doing it when I was cutting. I hit, I nicked it right here with the knife a few times and you use that as your guiding point to, to, to remove that last vertebra around here and then you can just pop it off. And then you've got a bottom jawbone. The jawbones will connect, gosh, I'm not sure where they connect. I think they connect up in here somewhere. But while the deer is laying on the ground, what, I wanted, what you wanna do is get your knife between the teeth and just cut back here there's gonna be meat back here, so you wanna cut that on both sides, just like this, so that you can open that deer's mouth and then twist it all the way back until the bones that join up here are uh, loosened, and then you can remove the meat from around those bones and pop that bottom jaw off, and then you're ready to start boiling. We hope you've enjoyed this instructional video on how to do your very own European mount. We hope you have a great deer hunting season and we hope you have a great week. And remember, where the moments happen, we'll meet you there. We'll see you next time.